When Harry Met Sally is one of those classic romantic comedy movies. From its upbeat, lighthearted atmosphere to an iconic ending that hundreds of people have probably quoted at their weddings, to having Meg Ryan, the queen of all rom-coms. Are you okay? Oh. Oh, God. Ooh. Oh, God. Oh. It's safe to say it's one of my favorite movies of all time. Oh. It's not a perfect movie, oh. but I love it a lot. See, in my opinion, this movie has a very realistic love story, and one that's, you know, conjured up straight from fantasy. Harry and Sally's best friends meet through them, Marie and Jess, and they end up falling in love. And I'd like to see this as the realistic part of this movie. Because most of the time when you meet people or start dating somebody, it's either through work or a friend or a friend of a friend or at a party or school. You know, someone in your circle you meet and fall in love with. And I think that's very realistic. That's how I met my girlfriend and things like that. But see, Harry and Sally, on the other hand, they didn't meet like that. Throughout the first act of the movie, it just shows them randomly meeting throughout their lives in different periods. And I, every time I watch it, I think to myself, what's the probability of that stuff happening? So me, loving movies, and just passed in a statistics class, I did the math for you. What is the probability that Harry met Sally? Just for some quick clarification and a quick example to better, you know, get you in a math mood. These are two independent variables and we're looking for a specific time and place like it is in the movie. So if it's a 50% chance for both of them to be in that spot, it, you multiply them together and then overall you get 25%. And if you don't understand that, uh, go learn some math. I don't know how to tell you. The first time they meet is in college, when through a friend they realize, hey, we're both going to the same place, we should just carpool together. See, the probability of this is nearly impossible to track, so we don't know what led them to this college, or how they became friends with this person, or even how they got set up like that. So all we can really say is that carpooling in the 1970s is plausible, and I'll give it like an 80% or something like that, I don't know. But the second time they meet though, that's where the meat and potatoes really start to, you know, come in, you know what I mean? While walking through the airport, Harry notices Sally and goes, I think I know you, and she goes, no. And then later, when Sally gets on this flight, who's sitting in the row behind her? None other than Harry. And then they have a heart-to-heart -heart and a whole bunch of stuff. So what's the probability of that would happen? So the JFK airport in New York has about 800 flights per day, making up about 160,000 passengers, which is pretty crazy. So we'll narrow that down some. A direct flight from New York to Chicago, there's about 20 flights per day. So the likelihood of you choosing one out of those 20 flights is 5%, and so the probability that both of them would choose the same flight is 0.25%. Every airplane has 143 seats. I'm going based off the movie, how we're doing a two row difference, I just chose two rows or six seats. So out of 143 seats in the airplane, the probability of you being put in those specific six seats is about a 4.1% chance. So the probability that both Harry and Sally were put in the same six seat area is about a 0.176% chance. So when you multiply all those factors that they're going to the same place at the same time on the same plane in the same six seat area is about a 0.00044% chance, which is ridiculous. And see math like this is fun because there's basically infinite possibilities. You could say, well, maybe they could have gone the day before, the day of, and then that gives you another 50-50, which cuts that probability in fourth, so 0.00011%. And there's tons of other variables you can account for, which is, which is fun. Maybe I'm coming down with something. Last night I was up at four in the morning watching Leave it to Beaver in Spanish. Buenos dias, señor Kleber. ¿Dónde está Wallace y Theodore? I'm not well. The final time they meet is randomly in a bookstore in New York where Carrie Fisher and Sally are hanging out and they're like, ooh, books. And then Carrie Fisher's like, that weird dude over there staring at you. And she goes, I know him. It's cool. But what's the probability of that happening? Let's figure it out. For now, I'll just assume that they both work normal jobs and then assume they have the weekends off. So I thought to myself, what's the likelihood of them choosing to go to a bookstore over other activities? So I thought of a list of 12 activities and the probability of them choosing a bookstore over the other 11 is 8.33% chance. So then we multiply these two independent variables together, and the likelihood that they would both choose a bookstore is a 0.69444% chance, which is not a sex joke, that's just math, the numbers. 
okay? Trust me. So, now New York City is a big place. There's over 250 bookstores in New York, probably more. That's just what I could find online. So I figured I'd narrow it down to Manhattan. There's about 32 bookstores in Manhattan area. So the probability of choosing one out of these 32 is 3.125%. So the probability that they would both choose the same bookstore is a 0.09% chance. So now, what's the likelihood that they would both show up at this bookstore at the same time? Most bookstores are open from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m., and I'm excluding the first hour and the last hour because if you go during those times, you're a piece of shit. And I'm going to assume that they're not complete pieces of shit. I'm just being nice. So dividing that into half an hour intervals, we get 16 of them. So 1 out of 16 gives you a 6.25% chance. So then once again, multiplying them together, the probability that they would both show up at the same half an hour interval is a 0.039062%. So now that we have a bunch of determining variables and factors, we can multiply them all together and figure out what the probability that Harry met Sally is. Or in this case randomly met her in the bookstore for the th third time first time first time in the bookstore third time ever so the probability that they would both go to a bookstore on a saturday at 6 30 p.m is about a 6.622 e to the ninth with the final answer being 0 0.0000000662 percent and no i did not count that on my fingers to better conceptualize it, the odds of that happening are 1 in 151 million, which is absolutely just bonkers. And this is without me accounting for some stuff, like weather or illness, or maybe there was a blockbuster movie that came out that weekend that they both wanted to go see. Now, those are some ridiculous numbers, but how do they compare to, like, everyday things? Like, how can we make a better sense of how just crazy those numbers are? So I did some research. Alright, so picture this. You've been dating this girl 10 years. You finally get ready. You're having a baby, all right? She's pregnant nine months. Her water just broke. Oh my God. So you rush her to the hospital. The doctor says, congratulations, you're a father. Wow. You hold your baby in your arms. You look down at it and it has a tooth in its mouth already. The odds of that happening are one in 2,500. And that's something that nobody ever thinks of. Something like being struck by lightning, which apparently people are afraid of. The odds of that happening are 1 in 115,000. Another common fear, like dying in an airplane crash, has odds of 1 in 206,000. Or better yet, everybody's seen Jaws, everybody loves Jaws. What are the odds of you being bit by a shark, huh? 1 in 3.8 million. Hmm? That's pretty crazy. Now something I wish I could do, and I wish everybody else could do, was win the lottery. So the odds of you winning the British lottery are about 1 in 14 million. And if you live in the U.S., uh, the odds of winning the lottery are 1 in 292 million. So, buy your lottery tickets. So, next time you get mad at your girlfriend or something like that, or you meet a girl and you start to like her, just remember how crazy it is that you guys both got to that point. The odds of that happening are literally as good as winning the lottery. Well, the U.K. one, that is. So, the moral of the story is treat your girl with some respect. She's earned it she's also stuck with you stuff like that you get it uh pussy see that little bit does <laughs> you sing what are you doing it's okay you can put me in the background i can put you in the background put me in the background you be your background music for one of those scenes You're goofy. <laughs>